All right, let's rig this thing up. So the, the very first thing we want to do here is separate our model from our wheels, so like the body from the wheel there. Uh, so once that's done, which I have got done here, I'm actually going to isolate it by itself here. And so now I have basically two parts here. I have uh, the body there, and I have the wheel here. And I'm actually going to select both of them, and I'm going to export them as an FBX file, and make sure selected objects is selected. That way it's only pulling in the selected objects that you have in the viewport. So I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, another important factor here is the direction uh, the vehicle is facing. So we'll see that this object right here is the front, and that is the front of the car there. So that's going to be important within Studio to have that in the right orientation. OK, so once we have it exported, we can come over here. And if I go to my meshes, I can add them here. Again, it's one FBX file, uh, but because I have two separate objects, it'll come in as two separate objects. So I can insert with location. And there we go. I've got my card here. Now, another important factor that I forgot to mention is that within here, this car is at the origin point. Uh, it, it doesn't look like it because the road's actually offset from the origin, but this car is in the center. You can see these lines kind of coming through at the center there. That's important for the sake of setting up the uh, wheel positions and mirroring those properly. Okay, so within the studio, now I have the body here and I have the wheel. So what we want to do is position these properly first and foremost. So what I'm going to do is move this wheel right there. And then I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate. I'm going to move this one over here. And with an increment of one, it doesn't quite line up for me. So I'm going to set it to 0.1. And I'm just going to kind of make it the best I can. Uh, I actually don't care if it's perfect. It, in this case, it doesn't matter too much. And do whatever you want there. Let's go back to one. Now, in order to duplicate those to get them on the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate, and then under position here, I'm going to expand that. And on the X axis, I'm going to turn that to a positive number and hit Enter. And now it's over here. So just invert that. If it's already a positive number, then make it a negative, and then go to orientation. And on the y-axis, we're going to put 180 to rotate them around. And just like that, we're done. OK, so we've got the wheels in position. Now let's group that up and resize. So I'm just going to call it car. And I did that. If I select all the parts, I can hit, hit uh, Control G, and that will group it. And then now we have the vehicle there. And let's resize. So I recommend inserting some sort of character in order to do this properly. You can just use like the rig build builder from the uh, animation tool. Also, if you get your toolbox, I think the first few items, like a, a zombie and a soldier, you can use those models as well. So I select the model, control three for the resize tool. And I'm just going to hold shift and scale down. In fact, you actually don't have to hold shift, just scale down. And I want to get it to a relatively good size. I'm kind of just guessing here. Maybe one increment lower. OK, that's probably good enough. Cool, OK, so we have our car sized down. The next thing we want to do is rename things. You know, right now the default names are not very good. So let's clean that up. Uh, naming things is really important for the sake of organization, both so you know where things are, but also if you're scripting anything, it's just way easier if you've got things named specifically. So the center car piece here, I'm just going to call body. And then the wheels, I'm just going to call each one a wheel. And we're going to group those and make it more specific later. But for now, they're just going to be a wheel. All right. 
Make sure you're saving pretty fre frequently with this. You don't want to lose anything. A lot of steps to go for. So the next part here is we want to create what I call the, the platform and the mass parts. So we'll get into this a little later, but we're going to make a lot of this massless and just rely on a couple other parts, uh, which lets you rig things up a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, insert object, part, and I'm going to control D duplicate that. I have two parts. One I'm going to name platform. And the other I'm going to name mass. And just to denote the differences between the two, I'm going to color them different. I'll kind of match that with the color of that car. This one I'll just make bright red. Okay, so now we need to position these correctly on the car. And the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to script it out. So I'm going to have a running script here that we're going to use for writing commands. And I'm just going to disable it. And I'll just call it commands. And this should just be kind of a, uh, a little scratch board for us to write commands. And then we'll go copy and paste them into the command bar down here and run them. So the way I'm going to make this, and we're going to use this throughout this tutorial, is we're going to base it off the first and last selection. So for instance, I select this one as the first, and then I select this one, that's my last selection. So the way we get the selection is we use the selection service, and we just run the get method. And that's going to return a table of all the items we have selected in order of first to last. So if you first equals selection one, and last is in this case, it's just going to be the second selection. You could do number selection, but we're only going to be selecting two items anyway. So the first and last selection, and we will reuse this a lot throughout this. All right, so now what we want to do with the first and last one is let's say we select this item and we want it to size it to the car here. So the way we can do that is our first selection's size, if we're going to match to the last selection size. And then the C frame will be the same as the last as well. So we are setting the size in the C frame of one object to another. So I'm going to copy that, control C, control V that into the command bar down there. And then I'm going to select the platform piece. And then I'm going to control select the body as the last selection. And then I'm going to run this command. And boom, just like that, I have set my platform part to this uh, same orientation and size as my car. Now I'm actually going to resize it now. Uh, and this is kind of guesswork here, but I'm just going to kind of put it right above the wheels right there. And we're going to leave it there. We'll mess with that later. So we're going to do the same thing with the mass part. So we select the mass and then we select the body, run the command and we have our mass part. Now what I'm gonna do with the mass part is I'm gonna set the size to 444, four, four, just a big cube. And we're gonna drop it down a little bit. You can't see it very well right now. Drop it down two increments. So it's, it's going into the ground a little bit and that's fine. We'll explain that later. Next up here is we want to make the wheels. So we already have wheels here, but as you can see, they're not very circular. And so trying to run these on the ground, it would be really bumpy. And in fact, even if you have a mesh wheel that's a lot more smooth, it's, it's still not great. It's still using the mesh geometry to try to guess the collision. And it, it's just going to be more costly. So a better way is to use a cylinder part. And that's going to run our cylinder collisions a lot more accurately. And it'll just be kind of a, a welded part to the wheels that will capture the collisions. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create some more parts. And we're going to name it a physical wheel and just make one for now and we'll duplicate this. And then we're going to go to shape we're going to change that to a cylinder 
okay? And copy that so we have four of them. All right, and we can actually get rid of this guy first. Now we need to set this to the position of his wheels. And so using this command, we can set the size and C-frame to the size of the wheel. So I'm gonna select the first one, and then I'm gonna select that wheel. And the way I selected it within a model is if I hold the Alt key, you can select within a model. So in order to select as a second selection, I do Alt, Shift, and then select that model. And then I'm gonna run my command, and boom, I set the cylinder part to the same size and position as the wheel. I'm gonna do that with all of them. Right, I'm gonna save again. And now we have our wheels in position. All right, the next thing we want to do is to make the parts massless and set their can collide properties and collision fidelity. So let's talk about this. With a car like this, we want to fake a lot of things. And the reason for that is just when it comes to programming a game, it's a lot easier to fake things than to try to replicate them exactly. So what I'm trying to say here is this. We have this car model right here, this mesh. And in reality, we really don't want to use its mass to properly simulate the car. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, in real life, you know, it might be heavier at the bottom and the lighter at the top, so the center of gravity really is lower. Um, in Roblox, there's really no way to control that properly, and so it's best just to set it to be massless, so it has really no sort of influence in terms of where the center of gravity is on this vehicle, nor the weight. So that's where this mass part comes in. Every single piece of this car is going to be massless except for this piece. And what the reason the benefit that that brings is now we can very explicitly set the position of our center of gravity and the mass and also like how massive the car really is just by resizing it. So as we can see right now, that mass part is in the center and it's kind of low. And that will help it from tumbling over uh, when we have a lower center of gravity. So it'll let you kind of drift around a lot easier uh, when we get it driving. So first thing I'm gonna do is throw these into the car and kind of group them up properly. And so the, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create two models. And the first one I'm gonna call body. And the second one I'm gonna call chassis. I'm gonna throw all of those in there. And the platform and mass part, I'm gonna throw in the chassis. And the physical wheels, I'm gonna actually throw into the body as well. And let's group the wheels first before we go on any further. So, if I can get my orientation right. So get the wheel and physical wheel that are together and group that together. And we're gonna name them wheel and then the suffix is gonna be based on the position of the car. So in this case, it is the front left, so FL. And we're gonna have that naming convention for a lot of different parts throughout this car to keep it consistent. So this is wheel rear left. This is wheel front right. And the last one is wheel rear right. Save it off. Okay, and don't worry about the, the Z fighting clipping right there. Uh, those green parts and the mass and platform will all be invisible at the end. So for now, they'll kind of flash around like that, but don't worry, at the end they won't. 
All right, the last part that we're going to do here is welding the parts together. Uh, so we won't have suspension yet, that will be in the next video here, but in this one here we're going to have the main parts welded together to act as one rigid body. So there's a bunch of different ways we can do this. We are going to script it out, but a, a way you could do it is under the model tab, under constraints, you could create a weld right there and just click on the two objects you want to weld together. Um, it's hard to do that when you've got parts overlapping like this. So I'm actually going to use our command again, and instead of setting the size in C-frame, we're going to create a weld constraint. And make sure it's a weld constraint and not a weld. Those are two op uh, different objects. So we're going to set the weld parent into the first object. And then we're going to set the part O to first, and part 1 to last. And that's it. So what that will do is we'll create a weld joint between the two parts that we have selected. So first thing we're going to do is weld the wheels because we've got the, the wheel mesh, but then we also have that physical wheel cylinder. So we're going to weld the wheel to the physical wheel. Make sure that's copied into the command bar and then run it. And you can see that we created a weld constraint between the wheel and the physical wheel. So again, select wheel, physical wheel, run the command, repeat that for the other two. And just like that, we've welded the wheels correctly. And now we want to weld the body to the platform. And then we want to weld the mass to the platform. And last but not least, select the car model and under primary part, under properties, click that and then select the platform part in the chassis. All right, and that is part one. So in part two, we're going to go into setting up the constraints and actually rigging up the suspension and seeing it roll around.